Good, mm, it's not morning. Good Sunday, everybody. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Mary. How are you all? Mm, it's not Oops, morning. Sorry. Good Sunday. I forgot to mute that. Um, how is everybody? Hi, Colleen. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? Did you get any Black Friday deals? So, uh, let me make this a little bit brighter. Just a minute. As I'm working with whites and stuff, and it's not a good... And there we go, much better. Much, much, much better. Okay, so I thought because hi Cherry, hi Bonjour Dominique, Bonsoir, ce soir was today. Uh, I thought that we are getting near the winter holidays and everybody wants to have stuff for decorations and all kinds of things. Why not start already with the live? Bonsoir, Mary Juana. Hi, Nasreen. Hi, Joachim. Oh, I am so happy that I see people from other time zones that they are still up watching my lives. So I just wanted to make it a little bit shorter because, and by the way, I don't know, I'm going to have to see if I can put any kind of announcement going over the screen. Um, where I am in Oklahoma right now, we have a cold front dipping in from the north and uh, the temperatures are dropping, but that's not the main issue. The main issue is that we have really, really strong winds. That is, uh, with, it's like 30, 35 miles per hour with up to 50 miles per hour gusts. So when it's like that, you never know when a branch might knock off the power. So if the life gets interrupted all of a sudden, that means I lost power and I might get it real quick. If that's the case, I will restart the live. It's going to be another link, of course. Hi, bonsoir, Cecile. Um, but if I don't come back, that means that the power didn't come back. Uh, let me say that real quick in French too. C'est un petit annoncement, il y a un nouveau courant d'air froid qui vient du Canada, voilà. Le problème c'est que, parce que il y a une grande différence de température, on a de très, le vent va jusqu'à 75 km à heure, donc c'est possible que je, que le courant électrique soit coupé parce que si les, les branches cassent, vous savez. Donc, si je n'ai pas de courant et si la, la transmission est interrompue, attendez quelques minutes, je peut-être je peux la recommencer si le courant revient, mais si je ne la recommence pas, ça veut dire que je n'ai pas de courant électrique. Donc, so, to make things a little bit shorter, this is a but I just messed up. Uh, this is a mix of one part Primo turquoise with three parts uh, Primo white pearl. This is a mix of half and half Primo white and Primo white pearl. Now, what I'm going to do first, just because, you know, I don't know when it's going to uh, dry properly. What I am going to do is number one, I'm going to measure this because see, this is on a medium thickness. This is on the thickest setting. So, what I'm going to do first is to get pretty much this cut because I'm going to sandwich this white between this blues. So I'm going to first cut it pretty much at the 
same dimension as half of this. And then I have, now if you don't have this, uh, this is the sparks from Alt Art Alchemy, the acrylic paint. And this one is the mermaid sparkle. If you don't have these, because I know this can be a little bit expensive, uh, you can easily do this using just the metallic, uh, you know, like the folk art, deco art, whatever, because there is a pearl here and you just put a touch of blue metallic acrylic and you can use that. I do not have the white pearl <laughs> in the folk art, so I'm going to use this. And what I'm going to do first, uh, the biggest difference here is that, remember I said that several times, the Art Alchemy paints, they have a glue-like component. So they kind of stick. So if you use your finger, be careful because it's going to take forever to take that paint from your finger. So I'm not going to use my finger, if, even if I normally do use my fingers. I'm going to just use a toothpick and mix really, really good. And you'll see why, because I want to make a kind of icy-like pattern. Because this is going to be the snowflake itself. And you can do the snowflake cane just using white. I mean, you don't have to go through all this trouble. You can just use plain white or plain white sandwiched between some, uh, a little bit of color. But uh, I just want to make it a little bit more fanciful because we all like fancy. Right. And I'm going to use not only this, but, and shush, I forgot to, to finish something and I'm going to finish it on, on the live. Hi, JC from Michigan. So I got this. And the other thing I'm going to add will be some glitter. Let me see if I can make these big, not so much glare. Still a lot of glare, it's not much I can do about it. Uh, I've been looking for a white uh, board that would be on a matte glass, but Now, what I'm going to use, you can find, and I'm going to post the links. Actually, I might post them. Uh, I'm going to use two different glitters. One of them is the one called Polyflakes. And this is a very interesting glitter. It's a glitter that changes color when you bake it. I presented it to you before, but people who have not watched my video or my channel for a long time, uh, they don't know. So, and actually I'm going to look for it right now. I don't know why I didn't look for it before. Uh, the thing is that it changes colors when you bake it, but depending on the temperature and depending on how long you bake it, it will change colors differently. It might become See, it's quite iridescent when you look at it, but it can get even tones of red when it's baked for a longer time at a higher. Um, and this one is made by. God. By. Who knows who? 
Glitterex Corporation. Hold on. And I got it from Michael, no, Hobby Lobby. So you might still find it at Hobby Lobby. Let me actually look for the link for Hobby Lobby as well. Okay, no, this is not a good link. But anyway, this is the link from the manufacturer. Hi, Chris. Hi, Warren. So this is the link from the manufacturer, and I'm still looking uh, to see if I can find it for Hobby Lobby. So uh, this is the PDF link. You can see that it's good for all kinds of things. And I've been using it for ages, for at least 10 years, I think. And it's awesome. Hi, Eman. OK, let me still look for. Let's see. Are you stupid? Okay. Sorry, you know how sometimes. Okay, no, it's my fault. It's still with one R. Because it keeps changing. Oh, it's so irritating. I type polyflakes and it changes into polyflake. And it says, do you mean polyflake? No, if I meant polyflake, that's what I would have put in there. But yeah, and they have all kinds of other uh, glitters that are awesome. And honestly, I did not ever find uh, another, even polyester glitter like this one. Hi, Holly. Hi, Pam. So if you manage to get this one, it's awesome. If not, you can use another one. The second one that I'm going to use, and I presented to you this company before you can look back in my, uh, I made a review about the American body art. They actually make all kinds of glitters and mica powders for body and face painting, but uh, they are absolutely awesome. And this one, they have these super fine glitters uh, that sometimes they call, call us sparklers. This one is in the series of elements and it's called Spirit. And I chose it because it has a blue violet. I'm going to try and show it to you. Let me see if I can manage to focus the camera enough. Just a second. See how gorgeous it is and how wintry. It is, and the uh, polyflakes in a close-up. 
they are super delicate glitters and I love them. You know that normally I don't work a lot with glitters, but these are just fabulous. So this one I'm going to, and actually let me give you the link for this one for the elements. And the good part about the American body art, you can get these, uh, I mean, normally they have the jars and everything, but you can get these little bags for 99 cents. So you can get a whole bunch of colors just for 99 cents a uh, little bag. And as I said, and they have something that's between a mica powder and a bitter, they call it a sparkler. And also you can know that everything that's at American body art, uh, it's safe. I mean, it's not, not uh, nasty. Let me try and find the spirits. Okay, I'm gonna, I, it's hard to put all of them. If you uh, scroll down, you'll see the elements collection glitter. And they have spirit, fire, water, and I think they had the wind or something like that too. Let me give you the. Hi, Pamela. Um, uh, I don't know. These you might find that not just Hobby Lobby, but at Joanne and stuff. But this one, I think that only American Body Arts sells it. But as I said, if you look, uh, they do sell the, oops. They, oh no, it's 89 cents, the sample. This is the sample. So you can see there's quite a bit of glitter in here. So you can get like 10 colors for nine dollars and they are really really nice and they are mica powders if you go back and look at my review let me actually find the review because i made the i think i made the bracelet when i was doing the review There we go. This is the review I, I did, and you can see the mica powders as well. They are beautiful. So you might want to watch the review. Now, what I'm going to do, as I said, and this is pretty much dry. I'm going to put these ones in the snowflake, and this one combined with the mica powder, I'm going to put in the translucent that goes around it. Right, so of course I need to open it first and it's going to make a mess. You know how it is with glitter that you start finding it even in unmentionable areas. But it's just too gorgeous not to take advantage of it. Okay, so what I'm going to do, see it's all here. It looks precious and beautiful. But see, on the other hand, see how delicate it is. It's super, super delicate. Let me get it in a close up again. It looks gorgeous. Okay, so hi, Dawn. So I'm going to fold this to make sure that I grab the glitter. Of course, there's some on my hands and everything, but that's okay. And I'm going to start twisting it. And I want to twist it and twist it and twist it to oblivion because I practically want lines. Uh, 
Yeah, that's what I loved about it, that you can get so many colors. Most of the time, that's what stops me from buying some super stuff is that, yeah, overall, it wouldn't be a bad price for per, let's say, ounce or gram. But just the fact that you can find it only in two ounces and it's nine bucks. Well, I'd rather find half an ounce and pay two bucks, you know, because that way for nine bucks, I can buy a ton of colors. Okay, I don't have enough lines. I'm going to do more of this. more twist in and you need to do this until you make sure that it doesn't uh what you call it crack Acrylic block because it's easier to work with it. I don't know. It's really, it can really be a pain. My only fear is that it can get on the pet's coat and then they lick it. And I have some doubts that it's super edible. That's my main issue. I usually try to vacuum this room after I work with glitter. And by the way, I know it might be a little bit TMI, but the whole thing just cracked me up this morning. Thank you. It's actually a $2 nail polish from the dollar store. It's called LA Colors, and they have uh, metals. Line. The other one is crap, but this one just lasts forever and they have beautiful colors. They have a silver, they have a, a nickel, gold, rose gold, green, blue, and fuchsia. They're really cool. Uh, bonsoir, Bea. So, yeah, this morning... Anyway, one of my pets needed to have his butt wiped. Sorry, but that's something as much as I love Connor to pieces. Sometimes when I forget to trim him around his butthole because he's so uh, fuzzy, he gets Klingons. And they are all of them so jealous on each other, you know, for one not to get more attention than the others. Then when I was done with Connor, the other two were lining up to get their butt wiped. Yeah, I was thinking that's exactly like with kids. You have to always be preoccupied with what comes on one end or the, or the other. But yeah, the joys of having a long-haired cat. In case you are thinking of getting one, be aware that you'll have to take care of that. <laughs> And I know, I'm sorry, and it, he looks really ridiculous when I have to trim him because he'll have all that fluff and there's just a, a hollow, like a donut hole in the fluff and you can see his butthole. But if I don't do that, then he, I can see him every other day running like crazy around the house with a Klingon that doesn't want to go away. And the more he plays the sleigh on the carpet, the more it gets embedded in the fur. <laughs> I know, Ali, that that's something horrible. But poor guys, it's not their fault. You know, I mean, yeah, the, the Maine Coons and the Norwegian, they come from the Norwegian cats. And the Norwegian cats developed all that long fur so they can deal with the cold. But they wouldn't have had this kind of issues because they would walk through snow and that would clean the Klingons. 
which doesn't happen with the house cats. Okay, what I'm trying to do is to get it in the same uh, dimension as the half of this. And remember, whenever you have something that's not the exact shape that you need it, you can always manipulate it. And I know it's going to take much longer to prepare these clays. That's why I, I jumped ahead to do at least the mixes uh, for this cane. Then it will take anything else. Okay. <laughs> Colleen, you are something else. Okay, so let me try and get this in a close-up so you can see what I fought for so long here. Uh, okay, so this is what I wanted. And I'm trying for you to see the glitter, but it's a little hard. The glitter is in there and it's glittering, but not under the camera for some reason. There, you can see it. Anyway, so I'm going to sandwich this between the between two layers of the mix of turquoise and white pearl. So remember, for uh, people who came later, this was uh, half and half white pearl and white. And then I smeared some sparks uh, acrylic paint on it. But you can just use the deco art uh, metallic white with a touch of blue. And then I sprinkled on it the polyflake. And this is a one part uh, turquoise with three parts white pearl on a medium setting and this was on a thickest setting before I added everything and I'm sandwiching it. Because this will be the actual snowflake. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to pass it through the machine on the thickest setting. Okay. Okay. Now let's prepare the filling. For the filling, I'm not going to leave just plain. Uh, yeah, I had a, a poor, my little old lady. I had a mix of, uh, she was a Yorkie Poo, so Yorkshire, Yorkshire Terrier and Poodle. And she was the toy of everything, so she was quite small. Unfortunately, she had the coloring of the Yorkshire Terrier, but the hair of the Poodle. And poor girl, if I wouldn't trim her butt periodically, her butt, her hair would get so matted that she couldn't do her business because it wouldn't come out. It was a matting of hair. Now, remember I was telling you about these beautiful mica powders. I'm actually, I have like three different tutorials, maybe even four coming out with these powders. And they come from... Deco room, and I think I added them in my uh, Amazon. Let me make sure that I have them. Uh, they are a really neat thing. I mean, they come with uh, a ton of colors. Really pretty. And just a second, I'm getting to my. Oh my God. Okay, just a second. Okay, let me try and find the... 
I'm trying to get their uh, jars ones. As I have the ones in the bags. Oh, it's in my email. Somewhere. Okay, I got it. Yeah, and you get like 21 colors and for $18.99. I mean, it's really awesome. Let me get you the... I added both the, the jars and the bags. So I'm just giving you the link to my general... Oh, my cup powders on Amazon. Oh, bon anniversaire, Dominique. So, yeah. So, they come in these pretty, pretty jars. This is teal. This, this is blue. But as I said, 21 colors. The, the amount seems to be exactly like the amount in the small uh, Perlex jars. was another blue I wanted to get to but they come the the colors are gorgeous I mean look at it's got a gray that looks very good for silver the violet the this is wine it's the gold it's really goldish and they even have black but let me grab the <sighs> right at the bottom of the box sorry i need to get out all the other ones oh, come on look it's right in here oh je savais pas pardon moi je savais pas ça Okay, so this is a blueberry. So I'm going to use the blue, blueberry, and the teal. Let me put this back. And yeah, I'm going to uh, show you soon a tutorial on how to make both uh, mother of pearl and uh, abalone slash power shell using these powders. You know, I already have one out, the Mother of Pearl, but this time I'll put out the abalone as well. Okay, so let's grab a little bit of blueberry. Let me see, it might need to be... Yeah, it's got a safety thing. Imagine that. But I love the fact that the, they have the these little things you see have smaller and larger stuff. And I'm going to have a resin thing too on this. Bon. J'espère ne pas oublier, Dominique. Okay, so this is the teal. So they are supposed to be working also as pigments. So I don't want to add too much on this. And then the blue. Oh. Okay, this is a little bit harder. But yeah, I prefer the jars because honestly, yeah, even with the 
I mean, the American body are they are sample bags. But whenever I manage to get the regular mica, I prefer it in jars. Obviously. And I don't know if I ever showed you what I did with a lot of my uh, mica powders, especially the ones I got from uh, Nurture soaps. Actually had an old uh, Lazy Susan carousel spice rack. And the spices, you know, were kind of old. So I just emptied all the uh, spice jars and let me show you what I did and I mean these are quite expensive but you can find them at the thrift stores for much less money let me try and get the See, this is what I did. I emptied all the spice jars and I filled them with mica powders. And I have my eyes open for more of these wraps. Even so I can even put my paints there because it works awesome. And it doesn't take a lot of room. I can have, you see, it's 16 different colors. Here we go. Okay, now let's get back to our snowflake. What's craft smart with? Yeah, you can you can mention brands here, especially if it's a tip. We love tips. Okay, now let me add a little bit of the glitter. Yeah, just be aware that if you want to buy it, they are darn expensive. I mean, they are definitely like 30, 40 bucks. I did add some in my uh, influencer store. If you look, I have there uh, an organizer section. Let me actually see if I didn't close it. I'm going to put the link here because I've been trying to get a lot of uh, ideas and stuff that would be helpful. I even have stuff for um, what you call it venue selling but as i said they are a little bit more expensive i mean you can even use those curry uh, coffee things okay Oh, remember, you can always check my store here because I try to keep it up to date with new stuff all the time and at the best prices that I can find. Okay, now I added the glitter. And now I'm going to do pretty much a marbling type of stuff. I'm rolling it with a lot of care to not trap air. Now remember whenever you put powder in polymer clay, of course it's going to want to not stick very well. So make sure that you do this. And I would start with a super conditioned uh, translucent. If need be, add a little bit of uh, 
um, clay softener. And again, I'm going to say, because I get asked all the time about how can I use baby oil or whatever, whatever to soften the polymer clay. Yeah, you can. But just if you can, doesn't mean that you should. You know, I mean, yeah, it's a quick fix, quick solution, but it's going to affect the texture, it's going to affect the aspect. I mean, generally speaking, to give you an example, if you want to do a, a gemstone imitation technique or anything with translucent, it's going to look different. It, uh, if you don't use something that was special for polymer clay, uh, it's not going <laughs> to... Uh, it might affect the translucency. It might affect the uh, what you call it, the how glossy it buffs. It's going to affect a lot of things. So try to stick with what was made for clay. And definitely, if you work with Pardo, do not mix anything in it. Just make sure it's warm. Keep it in your bra. Don't start putting stuff in it because that's not going to make it softer. So see, I'm just, I keep rolling and flattening so I would get marbling without getting the clay not sticking because of the, yeah. It's not okay. Vaseline is not okay. They are not made. They have, you know, it's like trying to make a cake and replacing uh, milk with water in the recipe. It's not going to be the same. And actually, that's not even a good example. Like replacing vegetable oil with water. It's going to be very, very different. So I'm going to do this only until I notice that it doesn't come apart where I applied the powders. I don't want to do it more than that. Okay, because I want to keep these little lines random in the cane. And we are going to start with the 1 12th of the cane. It's going to be a round cane, a kaleidoscope round cane. But it's much easier to start with half of the uh, triangle that is at the base of the kaleidoscope. And I was asked so many times, how do you know how much clay you're going to use for your cane? Well, let me give you an example. You see how much clay I have here? This is pretty much my cane to which I'm going to add this. So, this is pretty much gives me the idea of how much, how big my cane will be. But I want to get this flattened to be as tall as this is wide. Because it's going to make things much easier. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually make a triangle. And it has to be a fairly acute triangle. Of course, everything I make is cute. <laughs> but anyway, so what I mean is going to be a long triangle. Mm 
you want to make it fairly equal all over the place. And this to be a little bit flatter. Okay, so imagine that this is the half of the triangle that's going to do uh, the base triangle of the six radial kaleidoscope. Number one, I want to cut this nice here. Because I want it, I want to get rid of these ends here. Actually, I have the thing from the, I don't know where my bigger ruler is, so I'm going to just use the template from Tiny Pandora's Easy Cuffs. And this I'm going to put aside because we're going to make a lentil bead, a swirly lentil bead. And yeah, I intend to do a really quick tutorial to show you how you can make awesome swirly lentils with cane remnants. Oh, you can make them all interesting. Okay, now, as I said, imagine that this is half of your kaleidoscope slice. So obviously we will need one part here. So it needs to be just a tad a flatter. Not now, but this is where it's going to be my thing, right? So I'm going to cut it just to have it ready, but I don't want to put it together yet because I don't want it doubled, I want it simple. Then we are going to do the little ice. Now watch this because this is going to be, see I'm going right at the corner here and I want it to be pretty much parallel to the other one and it helps when you use the sharp end because that might not deform your whole thing. <laughs> okay, now. I have this here, I'm going to put a piece, right? But what I'm going to do first is this. it down with me trying to cut it with the dull side and then at the exact same spot here so it has to go from here 
the thing is though that on this one you have to be very careful because you do not want this is going to touch the next one so you don't want it to go all the way to the end here so we'll only get it for like half of it And now we can face the and now the other thing that we want to do, and this time we do want it to go all the way is the one here. And let's do one more because there's a little bit left. So now I'm going to actually reduce this. Hi, Debra. I'm glad that you're awake. What's the oh oh? What was the oh oh about? Now remember, I have this, and I'm going to put it when I reduce it enough that I can cut it in two and stack it. Remember, when trying to reduce a triangle, never press here because you're going to get a dip like this. You want to press on the edges and also pull a little bit on them. So don't press here, press here pretty much here at the edge. And the same for this, press down. And then pull a little bit because these edges will have the tendency to stay behind. And also don't forget to it actually got on the wrong direct angle and don't forget to uh, reduce it a little bit on the uh, tile because that's going to reduce the clay wastage and you want your uh, straight angle to be on the opposite corner of your little branch here and as i said i'm always comfortable when i have to reduce about I can do half an inch, but I prefer an inch. So I'm going to reduce it until it gets like two inches long. So I'll see how it's pushing. And I did uh, condition the... Oh, good. I'm glad we didn't. Well, I'm sure that there must be some weather affecting the transmission with all this stuff going on. Okay. Now let me cut the ends. And I'm going to whip up my little cane slicer. Remember, these are the four inches gilet blades. We're going to make some awesome lentil beads, swirly lentil beads out of this. And go ahead and cut until you get the full effect here. So let me see, do I have two inches? 
almost. And no, I did not do it in FEMO. It, in FEMO, it would look much uh, better, but remember that the FEMO translucent is not as uh, translucent as Primo. Okay. Let me make sure that I don't make a mess here. Okay, and now we are going to place the a little bit less. Okay, so this is finally the triangle of the kaleidoscope. This is what's going to be the snowflake. And remember, push down and pull a little bit on the edges. So this has to be equidistant. That means all the sides and all the angles have to be the same. And see how the edge tends to stay behind. That's why I said you need to, from time to time, you need to pull on the edges. And try to keep it equidistant and uh, honestly I'm going to tell you a secret I prefer because of my hands I know the easiest and most recommended thing is to reduce this until you can cut it in six but because of my hands and because when it starts getting taller I have issues uh, reducing it I usually reduce it until I can cut it in three and then for me, it is uh, comfortable to reduce a half circle. If you have problems reducing a half circle, then just keep uh, reducing this. You can even cut it in half and reduce each half uh, in order to be able to have six pieces. But I personally have no problem uh, reducing a half circle, so that's what I'm going to do. Because I don't want a lot of wastage. Because the translucent is soft, it's going to be quite a bit of wastage anyway. But... And yes, you can use this beautifully on a Christmas ornament. I was actually going to do a Christmas ornament too, but uh, when I cleaned the stuff at the beginning of fall, I have no idea what I did with the whole box of Christmas ornament glass, you know, the blanks. So I'll have to look for them because there will be quite a bit of Christmas ornaments tutorials uh, before Christmas. Uh, I'm going to try even to do a image transfer. So, oh, I'm sorry, Deborah. Uh, so that we can make, you know, the Christmas ornaments with the photo of the family member with a little frame and with the uh, year so you can make keepsakes and uh, this coming week I should go with my best friend to uh, Kinko's to get those uh, the photos we want to put 
printed on a color laser printer because that's the best transfer. Okay, let me see if I got enough to cut it in three. Uh, almost. There we go. Because I know I'm going to have to get rid of the ends. That's why I made it a little bit longer. And I might have to make it a little bit even longer than this. Because I'm not to the non-deformed part. But we're going to have a lot of beautiful beads, I can tell you. Hi, Sonia again. I had the intention to put that little camera in the corner so you can see me too when I'm working. But on this wind, there's a little lost dog. It's not that little, actually. It's about whisper size, maybe a little bit bigger. It looks like it's a mix of an Akita or something. So I went outside to give it some food and water. And by the time I got back inside, I looked like a mushroom again. So I didn't feel like doing my hair before the live. That's why you cannot see me too. Okay, so I did the three. And this obviously is going to be around. So now I'm going to just reduce the round. And why I wanted to show you, but I'll make another one as soon as I get uh, the I find the Christmas ornaments. Why it's so easy to do uh, snowflakes because you can make them hexagonal. And if you calculate properly, they are going to fit perfectly everything. Now, even in the half circle, you still need to be careful and pull on the edges because they will have the tendency to stay behind. And I know I'm going to have to trim my fingernails soon. I was going to say something about food. And I forgot. But I found something that was really neat. And I forgot. Okay, I think I can cut it in two now. One and a half, so almost one and a half. It is one and a half.
All righty, because even if it's not perfectly round, it's going to round up now. There we go. Yeah, I hope it will. Yeah, you didn't send me some some beautiful butterfly wing cane remnants. Yeah, when I was complaining, I ran out of uh, scrap polymer clay. <laughs> Deborah went ahead and she shipped me a full box of all kinds of scraps. That's why I was able to make so many, so many scrappy tutorials for a while. There's so much stuff you can do with scrap clay, especially when they are beautiful. Okay, here you want to make sure that you don't make it twist as you're reducing Okay, and I'm going to get about one third of this, maybe a little bit more than one third. And continue. Oh, it's Sasura Trejoli. Parce qu'on a beaucoup de translucide. Another thing you can do with this type of stuff, you can make, uh, maybe I'll find time to do that. You can make, um, what should we call it? Lights covers. because we want three different sizes. So I'm going to get again one third of this and reduce it even more. Theoretically, this is way too soft. I shouldn't, I should have let it rest. But for the purposes of the live, I'm just going to keep working. Okay, now, what we want to do is first place a very thin layer of uh, translucent, but it has to be very thin.
of course if you want we don't need the lid for while we are working if you want you can place some uh, uh, bacon bond on the glass but you don't really need it because it's going to be curved here so there's no risk of it coming off the little jar just make sure that you don't trap air Then nicely blend where they join. Now for the bottom, you can easily use some of the scraps from the canes. Now, ideally, you let your uh, canes in the fridge for a little bit, but we don't have time for that now. So what we need to make here is just a base to put the slices on. And again, check if you don't have bubbles. Because that can be a disaster. And now we can go ahead and cut at the end here. The whole look will be very much like glass. Oh, c'est si joli. Dominique's cat is watching the video with her.
Yeah, my Seamus likes to watch videos too. Connor is not that interested anymore unless it's about uh, documentaries with fish or birds. But Seamus, no, and Seamus has a favorite cartoon that looks very silly to me, but he loves it. If I wouldn't let him watch it at least once a week, he starts throwing tantrums and demanding that I put on his cartoon. Okay, now we can start actually applying slices. Okay, now you know the trick that whenever you have a round thing, you must uh, try not to cut straight but roll a little bit and I'm going to try and roll it fairly thin. And I'm going to try and a bit thinned out even more. And definitely thinned out in a round pattern, not. Now remember, we have glitter all over this snowflake. And the way that I did the that uh, sandwiched, I think it's going to make it look a little bit three-dimensional. But we are going to help it look three-dimensional here in a minute. Okay, let's grab a smaller one. Generally, I only use one or two of the large ones because the smaller ones are more you can create more patterns with them. And again, if you put your cane in the fridge, it's going to be much easier to cut the slices properly. And that's all that we are doing and make sure that you flatten especially the edges. I might have done this a little bit too thin.
and it's okay if you do just half of a slice because you know how sometimes snowflakes don't make it in one piece. All you have to do is to get the feeling that it's snowing. Now, here I'm going to put only one here and two here, and you'll see why. Because always when you cover a salt and pepper or pepper shake, uh, you have to think about the fact that kind of need to see if it still has stuff inside or not. So the best thing is to make some pokey holes. So you can see what's in there, if you're running low or not. Okay. One more side. Let's get a few more tiny ones. And now comes the part where we have to work a lot on getting it nice and even. Now, let's start doing a little bit of 3D in here. Uh, I wouldn't put it in the dishwasher because think about the fact that you're using hot water and as it gets banged around, it might start changing shape. Or if it is something that's fairly in might actually be ripped apart. Dishes are not treated very gently in the dishwasher. So see what I'm doing? I'm just doing a little bit of dips in the in between the lines of the snowflake. 
to increase the 3D effect even more. Let me make sure that I get it darker and closer because you cannot see that. What I am doing there, you cannot see well. Give me just a minute. Okay, now you should be able to see better. So just by uh, cutting partial slices and uh, um, flattening some of the slices more than others, you'll create the illusion that each snowflake looks different than the others. And again, if you let the cane rest a little bit, it will definitely, the slices will be more even. Okay, now, for the next step, it has to be baked. But before baking it, I'm going to do this, and you'll see why. And we'll probably finish it next Sunday. So from spot to spot, but use something soft. You don't want to poke holes. do this we are not going to add anything right now what's to be added will be added after it's baked and the same for the ribbon around the opening because this will look like other snowflakes that are more in the distance. And before baking, of course, we need to put up the 
little holes just as if I need grab my fuckers. So you can use the bitty doodlies, doodlers or the camper cutters because it's about snowing. Usually I like on the uh, salt and paper, paper shakers to put the flower uh, kind, but because we are talking about snowing here, I'm going to do just plain round ones because I don't have a, yeah. Uh, because I don't have a snowflake cutter. I'm going to just make some round. Get this out of the way. And this one. So remember that here I left on purpose uh, room. So And again, this is much easier to do if you put the whole thing in the fridge for a little bit. It's much easier to remove these. And then when they are all soft. So I'm going to have to put this in the fridge and do this, but you got the, the idea. So I'm going to do this and, and then I'm going to bake it. And bake it at 275 for about 45 minutes. And we'll finish it next time. And in the meantime, hopefully sometime this week, I'll use these to make some lentil beads. Okay. So there we go this is the snowflake cane and hopefully for next time i'll also find my christmas ornaments to make some stuff with that too but you'll see it will look absolutely fabulous once it's finished thank you and i shall see you next saturday look forward for more cool stuff Thank you, thank you very much, and have a wonderful what's left of Sunday. Happy claim. Bye.